Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Skippy Low Looks at Hollywood. Today's guest is the very lovely and talented Susan Strasberg. And now, here he is, the man of the half hour, Skip E. Lowe. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Looking at Hollywood Today. I have a very special show for you today. It's one of my favorite actresses, and she is the very, very fabulous Miss Susan Strasberg. Hello, Susan. Hi. When I think of Susan Strasberg, and when I use that word, Susan uh -huh. Strasberg, and hear it, I think of the theater. Now, Love why? You. A lot of people, I guess, do. And it's interesting because I, well, I think part of that has to do with my father. Exactly. And the actor's studio. Uh, and that whole association, because actually, career-wise, I, well, like I started in diapers, but I've been working for 30-some-odd years, and I didn't start. The, most of the early things that I did were television. I mean, I did uh -huh. television when they didn't have a peacock, when they had <laughs> a Miss color girl who was, oh God, pretty girl with red hair and kind of really? white skin and blue eyes, yes. The bird came later. Uh -huh. And I did the first color series, I think, on ever on uh -huh. television. Uh -huh. And I actually did films. I had done two films before I had uh, really mm -hmm. done, done any theater. But your first, you started at 14, weren't you? With yeah. At 14, and what uh, show was that, that you debuted? I debuted off it's Broadway in something called Maya. Maya, right. And that, that was off Broadway. Marty Ritt was in. It had a lot of good directors. Marty Ritt, Leo Penn, uh -huh, uh -huh. Kay Medford, who uh, was in that. Kay Medford, was she in that? Yeah. A lot of people uh -huh. uh, were in it. And uh, then I came to Hollywood. No, you didn't come to Hollywood. Didn't you go on Broadway? Didn't you do Diary of Anne Frank? I did Diary of Anne Frank after. After? I had done Cobweb with Vincent Minnelli. That was my debut. You mean you did a movie before you did Broadway? I did two. Before yeah. you had Broadway? Yeah. I had done I Picnic, and I had done, wait, Picnic? First I did Cobweb, uh -huh. then I did a lot of television. I, uh -huh. I did Juliet on Craft, uh -huh. live television. I mean, a lot, lot of television. Mm -hmm. Then I came back to California, did Picnic, and I was supposed to do, it's funny the way life works, right. uh, there, I was supposed to do Friendly Persuasion with... With Anthony Perkins. Yeah. Yes. With, uh, and Willie Wilder was directing uh -huh. it, right. and some of I've always wanted to work with. Uh -huh. And I was kind of verbally committed, mm -hmm. and I got and Frank, and I remember I think I called Mr. Weiler and said, I would not ask, but this is the part of a lifetime, and uh -huh. will you right. release me? And I'm not sorry that I asked, but I regret that I never worked with him. You were him. 16 when you did that, Frank? Yeah. You were 16. Yeah. Tell me, a 16-year-old girl on Broadway doing a, a tremendous show like The Diary of Anne Frank, how, how did Susan Strasberg feel about that? My father was once asked um, what he thought about the fact that I became a star right. so quickly and, and uh, so early. And I, th I think the analogy he used was he said, well, you know, success and fame are like a box of chocolates. If you eat a couple of pieces at a time, it's delicious. If you have the whole box, it can give you a stomach ache. <laughs> I got a stomach ache <laughs> at the time. Yes. But you like the theater, don't you? Susan? I love the theater. The I just come off six months on the road. I did. Uh, Agnes of God. Agnes of God. Who was that with, Susan? Uh, I played it with Peggy Cass, uh -huh. who was just wonderful, and it was very different because people think of her as doing comedy. And it's really the first time in I've done some theater. I did a little bit of theater out here at the Westwood Playhouse, but I hadn't really seriously uh -huh. done anything. And that's a difficult show because mm -hmm. it's just the three people and three people I, in the show. The, that psychiatrist uh -huh. is on stage mm -hmm. the entire time, and I mean, if you scratch your nose mm -hmm. it's, they yes. notice because it's all kind of so stark and uh -huh. it was it was good it was almost like i felt like a fighter getting back uh -huh. into training again you know what was my favorite movie Which stage one? struck yeah a lot oh, of people i just love that movie yeah tell me about that your feeling on that movie Jeff, uh, uh, Susan. That's a, a remake of Morning Glory. Yeah, which I never saw. I still haven't seen you Morning haven't? Glory, no. And I hadn't seen it. I do, avoided seeing it before because I didn't want to be uh -huh. influenced. Um, now, that was really, it was my first romantic part at the time. I got Henry Fonda kissed me. It was <laughs> funny because 20 some odd years later, I uh -huh. did my first kind of real love scene with Peter Fonda in The Trip. It was like I got yes, you did that both. The trip. I got the right. whole family, family. twenty five years right. apart. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but for when I did the scene with Hank Fond, I remember I, they had they put me on a staircase because he uh -huh. was very very tall. Uh -huh. So I was on a step above him, and I was so nervous. I kept thinking, oh, you know, 
kissing Henry Fonda, what am I going to do? How uh -huh. I, do you act this? I mean, I don't, you know, why, how do you handle it? Uh -huh. it? The film itself was not, a, you know, it's funny, memory is so subjective. They are, If yes. you and I were to describe this conversation, uh -huh. even in a month or tomorrow, it would be completely different. Or, and right. it wouldn't be that it would be a lie, it would just be that we would pick different pick things different to remember. Things I remember, remember that being a fairly unhappy experience, partially because my mother... Un unhappy? My mother, who was an extraordinary woman and mm -hmm. who coached Marilyn Monroe, Jennifer Jones, people right. like that, was coaching me. Mm -hmm. And I was going through a period, I think I was about 20, and I really was ready to break the apron strings, and yet because I felt dependent yes, yes. on my mother uh -huh. for the coaching, I couldn't really break away. And I saw the movie recently on television, and I could see, it's funny, when I see Marilyn uh -huh. in, let's say, uh, 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 Some Like It Hot, like or, it hot. or um, oh, the bus, stop. bus Stop, I can see my mother's coaching, that Marilyn's you taking You can really? It. Yes, sure, I see gestures and things that were not Marilyn's, but business that my mother specifically gave her. How about Marilyn, uh, Marilyn Brando? Can you How? see anything about... Marla, he studied with your dad, didn't he? Well, no, but um, coaching is different than studying. When, when coaching oh. means that my mother actually, coaching is someone who goes on the set with you, who breaks down breaks, the part. That's right. very different than, yeah. there, there's no, if you look at the actors who studied at the uh, actor's studio, yes. there is very little, even stylistically, that they have in common, mm -hmm. except that they're all good, I would like to think. Because if you think, people tend to think, well, the method, and there's a, a predominance of actors who act uh, uh -huh. very realistically, but on the other hand, if you look at Jerry Page or Kim Stanley or Julie Harris or Walter Matthau oh, you're or, my favorites. or Maureen Stanley. Stapleton or yeah. uh, Pacino or De Niro uh -huh. Uh -huh. or Jane Fonda, I'm sorry, uh -huh. they're not similar uh -huh. in, in there's no stamp on them that says uh -huh. method or that whole thing. There isn't. No, there anyway. isn't, is there? No, it's just that they're really. good. Yeah. Do you know, I remembered you on Broadway, you did a show, Little Foxes. Didn't you do that? No, but if I was good, it Wait was me. Wait a minute. <laughs> if you, you remember... Didn't do, did, you I didn't do Little Foxes, Susan? Tula Bank had to Little Foxes. No, play, uh, but the daughter. Now, who no. am I thinking of? Who did that when, on Broadway? Uh, well, it would depend when it, the production was. Uh, uh, not Tula the Bankhead. This but is the know, other one. It's funny. I, I get confused same. with you with someone else then. I'm well, it confused. depends who it is. <laughs> that could be good or that could be bad. No, I've been confused. You know, I'm looking at you right now. You remind me of... Natalie Wood, you know that. Thank I must you. tell the audience. She was you. lovely. A lot of people. We're both small. Small. And dark same, and yes. To remind me of Natalie. Did yeah. you know her? Yes. She was lovely. I knew, I met Natalie when I came to California again. My mother was with me. And this must have been oh, 50s, I guess, early 50s. Is that when you came to Hollywood in the 50s? Yeah. She was, well, I'd been out here before because my father worked at 20th right. for years. But this is after when yes. I came out for yes. my own work. And we were staying at the Chateau Mormont, and Natalie was rehearsing uh, with Jimmy Dean, who and Jimmy knew my mother, so we Rebel spent without a cause. Rebel. Mm -hmm. And I was, I guess, getting ready for Pit. Well, maybe I was Pit. doing Cobweb. I may have been doing Cobweb. Uh -huh. And I just, I thought Natalie was wonderful. I used to, I would say, I had a girlfriend, Steffi, sitting and I said, Steffi, I, when I grow up, I want to be like Natalie. Natalie was my age, uh -huh. but because she was a Hollywood baby, so, I mean, it's, she had the fingernails, and she yes. was smoking, and yes. she was much, much more sophisticated uh -huh. at that time uh -huh. than I was. And it was so funny. I remember the shock I had when I realized we were exactly the same uh -huh. age. <laughs> Natalie Wood. That's what I, I think of Hollywood. When I think of uh, Hollywood, I think of Natalie Wood. What do you think of her death? What did you think of that? It was sad, wasn't it? Anyone who has that kind of early... She was afraid of water, too, wasn't she? Yeah, she had had... I had heard, and I don't this I don't know, that she would had uh, not just a fear of death. I wonder if sometimes that kind of fear is not almost a precognitive. Yes, I'm yes, yes. Kind of, I do feel that you, all you're, You do astrology, don't you? You're into astrology, aren't well, you, Susan? Well, I would say that I'm into the mantic arts, whatever that includes. In other words, I guess metaphysics. Metaphysics. Um, so it's a... Healing is the field that I'm really the most interesting, interested in, and I do some lecturing on it. Uh, healing or the creative process. Healing of what? Uh, uh, like what? Well, well, what do you want to heal? Yourself, in other words. It's all in the, the mind. Mi it's well, the mind. it's not. There's a mind-body connection. Yes, right. But that just the way an actor uses a technique to alter consciousness when he's acting, mm -hmm. what I found is that a lot of the techniques that are used for stress relief, uh, for healing mm -hmm. are the same things that actors have been doing for <sighs> hundreds of years. True. I, I get, I mean, I was, I guess, 
I'm younger than Shirley, but I got involved with a lot of Shirley, the Shirley McLean. McLean. So that I, um, in my book, I have some stories. Diane Ladd does that too, doesn't she? She's I, I, involved, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. So that you know, I believe in reincarnation and things. Once what happens is once you get hooked in to that area, you, let's say I had a lot of psychic experiences. Uh -huh. I thought I was crazy. <laughs> Maybe I am. And that led, one thing led to the other. Uh -huh. uh, my, somebody recently said to me, well, why, how can you really believe in reincarnation uh -huh. apart from your own, well, so many of these things are based on empirical evidence. You can only say this, I, it happened to me and this experience uh -huh. made me feel that it was valid. But uh, do you know Max Gordon? He Max was, Gordon. Max Gordon was He's a famous theatrical, theatrical producer. producer oh, right. Yeah. And yeah. Arthur Schwartz, who wrote Beth yes, Entertainment, right. is a friend of mine and told me that when he was very young and had just come to New York, was writing songs, Max Gordon kind of adopted him and they used to hang out together. Max loved the theater uh -huh. so much that he had a bed that he kept in his office above <laughs> his theater. And one night they were sitting and discussing life and Arthur said, well, you know, Max, you believe in a lot of kind of strange things, but I mean, you don't believe all that nonsense about reincarnation, things like that. Uh -huh. And Max said, oh, absolutely, kid, I believe in it. Uh -huh. And Arthur was sort of stunned and he said, why? And Max Gordon said, listen, kid, I can't believe I close here and don't open somewhere else. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's a you cute know, for story. an actor, you, you, you got to go with the next booking. <laughs> that's a cute story. You're writing now, aren't you? Just I'm doing in the second, second book? book. Yeah. Second book. Much, much more, I won't say difficult, much more challenging. Is it? Um, Could you tell us about it? Well, so, you see, the first one, because it was autobiographical, it had a beginning, a middle, and end. Mm -hmm. And what I was mostly concerned with in Bittersweet was keeping a balance. In other words, not making it uh, revealing without being prurient, mm -hmm. uh, protecting people so that if there was any villain, it was me, not anyone else right, really right. in the books. Because um, part of, I guess, the theme of that was that ultimately you take responsibility for your own life mm -hmm. or not. <laughs> anyway, the second book is when, when you get in trouble with a novel, you can't go back to the data. You can't go back to the facts. What uh -huh. you go back to is your own imagination. Yes. And because I'm writing, it's a story of a tall, blonde, blue-eyed, <laughs> Irish Catholic superstar from Hoboken, New Jersey. Oh, really? <laughs> and some Where did them, this come from, Susan? Someone said, why are, you, why are you making her like that? And I said, so no one will think it's me. And my girlfriend, Rona Jaffe, said, well, the minute you change it, everyone is going to think it's you anyway. <laughs> so you might as well. So actually, I've changed a Do you want to be a blonde, Susan? <laughs> I guess most people, and actors are no different, True. go through a period when you want to be someone else, or you think that it would be easier uh -huh. if you were someone else. And I'll never forget once, uh, my parents used to take a house on Fire Island, and on, during those summers, mm -hmm. Marilyn Monroe and I would share a room, because it was a small uh -huh. house. And you I shared with Marilyn, did you? Yeah. And one morning I woke up early and she was standing nude uh -huh. looking out at the beach and of course I'm looking at her like this and I was thinking oh my god she's so beautiful and she caught me looking at her and I was kind of embarrassed and I said oh Marilyn I said I would give anything mm -hmm. to be like you uh -huh. and she looked at me and she said oh no Susie don't say that <laughs> I'd give anything to be like you people respect you <laughs> She wanted to respect, I, didn't she? I realized that we all, no matter who you are or uh -huh. what, there's always that mm -hmm. suspicion that somebody else mm -hmm. is having an easier time of yes. it. Or, and really it isn't if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Marilyn really wanted respect, didn't she? She thought she didn't have respect. Is that what you think? Well, she didn't on a certain level. She didn't? I don't think she was taken seriously by a lot of people. Uh -huh. First of all, Until she died. Uh, After her until death. Until she died. Yeah. Yes, because yes. then she became, that's what we tend to do in this country. Yes. When people what are kind gone, of, we lie and Susan Strasberg, what kind of a woman really was Marilyn Monroe? I mean, you knew her intimately. She was much of a complex. A child, wasn't she? Well, all good actors have that childish, that, that child still in them. Uh -huh. Albert Einstein once said that the most important thing in life was to retain the vision of a child. And that's something that sure. actors sure. need to do. However, Artists don't always make the differentiation between being, uh -huh. I would like to retain that child-like uh -huh. quality, but hopefully I won't be childish. Uh -huh. And there is a difference, in other words, you can do what you can have one without the other. Uh -huh. uh, Marilyn was much more complex, I think, than people thought she was. Uh -huh. She was much brighter. Uh -huh. I mean, it was 
street smart, but she was really, street smart, wasn't really she? Really bright, bright, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the thing I've learned, or that keep learning, is that emotional capacity and intellectual capacity mm -hmm. very often have nothing to do with one another. Yes. That you can be very smart and still emotionally, uh -huh. it, unless you make that connection. Yes, yes. And I've known a lot of brilliant people who couldn't live their lives. Susan, so that about your life? So far, so good. <laughs> it, do you have a man in your life right now? Uh, not at the moment. No? No. It's funny. You were married, right, to, to an I actor? I was married once to, to Christopher, Christopher Jones, Jones, wonderful actor. Yes, he was wonderful. And James, very much Jimmy Deanish. They, they claim he was, but he really wasn't. He was no, his he own. He had his own quality. I think and so too. We have a daughter, Jennifer. You do have a daughter? And uh -huh. I, we, I was just married for a very short time. Uh -huh. You know, it's funny, in, in talking about. Um, it's a, it's a story I, I was thinking about, oh, when you look back on your life and you say, do I regret? Do yes. I have any? Or things yes. being easier for someone else. It's. I had a dream around the beginning of this year that this kind of. Indian type guru in a loincloth mm -hmm. came and was adjusting my spine. You know, yes. the way a chiropractor right, right, does. Right. And my spine was going. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked up at him and I could feel my spine cracking. And I looked at him and I said, You know, you're fixing my back is giving me a lot of pain. Uh -huh. And this man in the dream looked me right in the eye and he said, No. He said, I'm giving you change. Your resistance is giving you the pain. Uh -huh. And it seems to me when I, in retrospect, that mm -hmm. life tends to offer change an opportunity if you are let flexible it. enough to let take it, it. but most yeah. of us go kicking and screaming all yes, the way. Yes, yes, yes. So you really don't regret your life, do you, Susan? No. And I don't even, my feeling is, you know, when you say, well, would I have done it any differently? Yeah, I would like you where I am now. You do. And everything that I did, good, bad, or indifferent, mm -hmm. is part of that tapestry. So if you took out the painful times, let's yes. say, or the yes. difficult times, those are the times that I feel helped me to grow uh -huh. or changed my perspective the way I handled mm -hmm. things and because I like now if you took away some of the threads of the past I would change today mm -hmm. you know maybe do I have time there's a very of story that I you love tell which I, or, Joe, it's yours. there's a, a story there's a man who was lost in a forest and he finally kind of found his way into this clearing uh -huh. And in the middle of the clearing, there was a, a log cabin and this old man sitting, rocking back and forth, smoking a corn cob pipe. And there were two roads on either side of this cabin. So this man, who's now starving from being lost and exhausted mm -hmm. from being lost in, the, in this forest, goes up to this man and says, excuse me, sir, he says, which one of these roads go to town? The nearest town. And the old man looks at him and rocks and he says, they both go to town. He says, well, which one should I take? And the guy says, well, the road to the left is going to take you the swamp route. He says, now, he says, there's a lot of alligators and quicksand in uh -huh. that swamp, but it'll get you to town. He says, now, the other road, he said, that's the mountain road. Mm -hmm. He says, now, that mountain road, we've got a lot of mountain lions and bears mm -hmm. around here. He says, mm -hmm. and a lot of rock slides, he says, so that's pretty bad. So the guy looks at him and says, well, tell me which one to take. Mm -hmm. Which one's the best road? And the guy looks at him and says, listen, let me put it to you this way. Whichever one you take, you're going to wish you took the other one. <laughs> and I suspect that life's like life that, that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is really, Susan. So you really don't regret your life now. Are you living in New York or California? I go back and forth. You do? In other words. Um, you prefer New York, don't you? No, I, I lived here for 15 years. Did you really? And it's so strange because all the time that I've lived here. I think I've of you as here, a theater actor. So I don't I know am. why I don't think of movies. All the time that I've, I've actually done maybe 10 plays in my life, and I must have done about 40 some odd movies. So I Isn't that strange? When I, th I never thought of that. Because yeah. I connect you with your father, see, that's what. But what's is. so strange is that all the years that I lived out here, people would say, Oh, Susan, how are you? When did you get into town? Uh -huh. I'd say about 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so you're living just in Just another new face so you in town. So you're bi-coastal right now, then? Yes. Yeah, I see. And you're, you're writing out here now? You're I write anywhere I go. Is when I was on the road, I took all these. You stuff were saying about. Let's get back to you on the road. You just. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, lecture. You say you're lecturing on the road, or? I, well, I, can't, I just did a play on play, the road. Right. But I, have st I started about two years ago doing some lecturing, and I. Mm -hmm it came about accidentally. I got a call one day and someone said, will you replace Claire Bloom? She can't do her one-woman show. Oh. And do you do one? I said, well, how long is it? And they said, an hour. I said, mm -hmm. well, what did she do? And they said, well, she did scenes and this and that. And I said, yeah, I do one of those. And I got off the phone. I said, oh, what am I going to do? And I sat down and I wrote a show. I used 
as a frame, mm -hmm. I wanted to have a kind of equal amount of humor and of kind of not tragic, but you know, to me it, it was important because it wasn't just for women's groups. What, there's this huge flourishing business around the, the country. There is, isn't there? For one woman or for one person show? Well, it's show. more than that. It's like Alan J. Lerner goes and takes uh, mm -hmm. and sings all his songs, or Henry Kissinger comes uh -huh. and does, it's called, what are they called? It's um, not lecture series, it's called uh, town, hall town hall series, series. Yeah. Yes, and right. colleges also. Yeah. And they're terrific because the people are hungry for it mm -hmm. and they're very responsive. Mm -hmm. And, it's one um, hour, just one hour. It's just one uh -huh. hour, uh -huh. and I do scenes. And what's nice about it also is that you can do anything you really want. Really, I can tell jokes, I sing, I tell <laughs> jo oh, all the stuff you wanted to do. You can play all the uh -huh. parts you never uh -huh. got a shot at. Great. So that it's it's a. You lovely like to do experience. comedy, Susan? I love comedy. I haven't, strangely enough. You haven't really, have you? In films, the only thing that I did, well, Picnic was funny. Yes. Um, on stage, I've done a lot of comedy. Uh -huh. A lot. I mean, the thing that I did, I did a Time Remembered, which was Helen Hayes and Richard mm -hmm. Burton. That was a comedy. Uh, some old Casey, I did uh, a lot of Shaw, which is all uh -huh. comedic. Yes. And I think that the reason I haven't done a lot of comedy is that because, although it's been 30 years, or maybe mm -hmm. not 30 years, I, I have to go on my fingers. Anyway, <laughs> however long it's been since I did Anne Frank, uh -huh. that because that was so strong, mm -hmm. such a powerful yes, beginning, yes. people tend to think of me as... And I do. I, can, right. I love doing serious things also, but God, I'd love to, you know. Susan? Put on a little more makeup and high heels and do a comedy. <laughs> Lee Strasberg, your mm -hmm. father, naturally. Yeah. Um, really, Lee Strasberg uh, is method actor. He's an a, a method actor, uh, instructor, is that correct? He was, Would yes. you say he was, well, right? Well, he was kind of the... But what did you thought of his instructor? What did you thought of your father? If he wasn't your father, now, what, what kind of a man, uh, was he a great... Everyone thinks he's great. Is he? Was he really that great? That's why I went. To I it. feel that he was. Yeah. He was. He was extraordinary. He was. Yeah. Yes. It's funny. I was reading a book. What made him so great? Uh, well, the right combination of emotion, intellect, and talent for what he was doing. Right. I also think that he cared. He had a passion mm -hmm. about acting, and it had, I mean, it didn't matter whether it was theater, because mm -hmm. theater or films, as you see in his own yes, performances right, that he right. did. In film, and I think he showed also that, that the work he was doing, you know, in the early days, people said, "Well, it's fine for theater." Yes. So it wasn't because we have half of our movie stars now have our great actors. had worked yeah. and had worked I don't, not just with my father, but with my father Uda mm -hmm. Hogg and other people yeah, yeah. Yes. teaching. Did you know Brando? Things. Did you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what kind of man that was well. Yeah, how kind of man what kind of man was he? Well, he was I young. Yeah. Imagine the same kind of man he is, but I I don't really you know don't him know. now. When he was young, he was wonderful. Of course, you know the thing is. You see, I was younger. If he was young, I was even younger. So that you see what you want to see. I just thought he was so romantic. And uh -huh. I guess everybody was in love with either Marlon or Jimmy Dean yeah. in those days. Who's and your favorite? Uh, Susan Strasberg, mm -hmm. you're a great actress. Thank and you. who is really, uh, today, who's your favorite people? We, do we have any out there? Oh, we've got a, we've got a lot of them. So like who? It's hard to... Uh, I know De Niro and all that, but well, the young, how about the young coming up you people? Young, young, yeah. Do you think, do you believe we have great actors out there as young? They're always, you know what, so a great actor can't be a great actor until he, he gets great to work. parts. Yes, right. So that a lot of the young actors haven't yet come into their parts. Do you and see anything out there? Parts or actors? Actors. <laughs> or parts, look. too. <laughs> um, there are a lot of, uh, the parts sure are coming I up for women, though. I Good certainly parts. hope so. Yeah. 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 I think I think so too. For a while, I think in in the sort of throes of that redefinition of, of mm -hmm. sort of woman's place in the mm -hmm. world, it was very confusing. What mm -hmm. was interesting to me was that it was really men who were uh, writing. Right, this. right, exactly. Pe women keep saying, "Well, we need more parts," but then when women would come out with scripts, mm -hmm. by and large, they would be men's scripts, mm -hmm. not and vice versa. Yes. Uh, but it always, it, to me, it seems it goes in cycles, mm -hmm. you know, that you look and say, oh, there's nobody coming up. There are no playwrights. There are no actors. But there are. And then you turn around, they're there. Yes. It's a little bit like the stars. Mm -hmm. You look up and you say, there are no stars tonight. Yes. Well, there are stars. It's just it's cloudy and you don't see them. Yes, true. Do you prefer to live in New York or California? I prefer wherever I am at the time. There are things that I love about California. It's... I, I love the beach. I love the sun. I have a lot of friends here. I have as many friends here as I do there. I love 
the change of pace. I'm a Gemini. I need You're, change. I am too. You Are see. you a Gemini? What? You poor man. I'm, I'm, I'm June 6th. <laughs> Heather, nobody's perfect. <laughs> I forgive you. Um, and we have a good sign coming up. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a terrific things coming year. up pretty yeah, good for us. Yeah, it should be a lot of changes and wonderful, a lot of wonderful yeah. stuff. Uh -huh. Susan uh, Strasberg, I'd like to know one thing. I'll never tell. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'd like to know what makes you very happy. Because you are happy. It seems that you're very happy. You're happy in life right now, aren't you? Yeah, I feel very blessed. My life has been very good to me. I... I think that the thing that's making me happier at this uh, point in my life is that I'm, I am more at peace with myself. That's, I see it. Isn't that strange? I feel and it. And so it's not, I'm not, if you were saying, well, when I was younger, I went for the gold ring, you uh -huh. know, on the merry-go-round, or I went for some, I always thought that there was going to be something outside, out there, and I was going to get it. Uh -huh. And when I got it, I was really going to be happy. Uh -huh. But and all those external things, it, look at all the people who did get it, whether it's, mm -hmm. it's Presley or Monroe or Jimmy Dean or Monty Cliff or Judy Garland, they got it and but it didn't make them happy. They and didn't make them happy. Somehow there was a shift that took place in my life where I started seeing that was all terrific, by the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love all the, the whipped cream and the topping uh -huh. on the cake, uh -huh. and that has nothing to do with really maybe who I am or what I'm about or what I really need mm -hmm. and want for myself. Yes. And once I clearly defined that for myself, it made things a lot easier. Of course, you should see me on a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, you, you, you have something you're uh, it's happening oh, at the yeah, hotel? Oh, yeah, something uh, terrific that I'm doing. I'm, just, I'm looking only because I don't want to get it wrong. That's but right, I'm doing it. It's the weekend of the 7th, 8th, 9th, and uh -huh. it's Hollywood International. The Hollywood International Hotel. No, no, you know, it's at it? the Sheraton Premier Sher Hotel. Oh, I see, okay. And people, it's open to the public, which uh -huh. is what's interesting. And the Hollywood International is a non-profit group, and they'll eventually start a museum. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. it's to preserve Hollywood. And, you know, if you think that we preserve a lot of things that are less worthy right, of preserving, right, right. but that we don't have a museum True. here, we don't ke keep hold of our mm -hmm. past. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so they're having a weekend where there are seminars and things yes. open to the public, so mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of stars coming in, and I'm doing one on fantasy and uh, scary mm -hmm. movies. Uh, oh. Then they have an award ceremony, mm -hmm. uh, which is also open to the public, uh -huh. on the 9th, mm -hmm. in which mm -hmm. I'm the mm -hmm. co-host, yes. and it's people like, I think, all the Hill Street Blues people, John Forsyth, um, and that Hal day, Roach, that day is what? Cesar Romero. Um, it's the 9th. The 9th? I think it's Sunday night. Sunday but night. They, the, it's like there's a soap opera panel. Susan, uh, time has gone uh -huh. so quickly. This is it. Time flies, even yes. when you're not having fun. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's been lovely. Did you? Thank you. I really enjoyed Thank it, you, it too. Susan. Ladies and gentlemen, you really have been looking at Hollywood today and a lot of New York. <laughs> this is Skippy Lowe. And a little New York on the side. Yeah. <laughs> on Broadway, you're only talking about a handful of people. I don't mean warm, I'm talking about white hot. And the dynamo who heated up West Side Story, Bye Bye Birdie, and Chicago, Broadway's answer to the energy crisis, Miss Cheetah Rivera. Yeah! Did I heard, I heard, I heard that you were born right here in Washington. Is that right? Right here in Washington. I don't know. What was Washington like in those days? Well, I knew her. I didn't know him. <laughs> All right, now we have to be serious. Serious. <laughs> Took them just a while. <laughs> Mrs. Washington. We're here at the Kennedy Center. 
going to be very serious now. Yes, we're going mm -hmm. to be serious. Now, we're going to tell them what this part of the show is all about. Yes. Well, this part of the show is about showstoppers, and it's about the creators of those numbers doing their original, original numbers. Well, let's see them. Let's see them, too. Okay. From how to succeed in business without really trying, the man who worked himself up from window washer to company president.